Hi. Howdy. Uh, let's talk about some ships. Uh, I'm John Crew, for those of you that don't know me, or harass me from YouTube comments. <laughs> I'm uh, Stephen Hosmer. And I'm Paul Jones. <laughs> we know who the fan favorite is then. Pardon? You're the fan favorite then. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we're going to talk about quite a few ships today. Um, we're going to talk about two you know about, two you don't know about, and then a few more. So let's talk about things you do know about. So we'll start with the Anvil Carrick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> knew there was going to be one. <laughs> so obviously a very popular ship. I hope you all liked seeing it earlier. But let's just go back in time to the original origin story of it. Just trying to work out where I can actually see the thing behind me. There it is. Uh, so it was one of the original uh, crowdfunding goals. It's ex-military design, um, but released as surplus civilian stock. Comes with everything in the kitchen sink that you need for long-term exploration. It's got medical facilities, repair room, garage and hangar, charting and sensor suites, lots of fuel, and the modular storage cargo pods at the bottom. So it was uh, introduced as part of the crowdfunding, one of the original stretch goals in November of 2014, which was about five years ago, so it's been a while. Um, we introduced it with a little choose-your-own-adventure mini-game uh, on the website, and here's a couple of stats about that. It was about like 28 pages long, something like that, 26, and about uh, 300, what was it? 300 different options. Options, yeah. Through, so. 300 yeah. little options. How many people can remember that and went through that? <laughs> wow. That's well, that's, yeah, that's quite a few. Did anyone do all 300? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you guys will be familiar with uh, some of these concepts done way back in the day. Uh, obviously, this was before we sort of uh, had all our metrics worked out. So, you know, we were building cool stuff. Um, but there was a lot of things with the ship that we sort of we wanted to improve on. So, uh, looking at you know we look at this slide here, and there's things like uh, the landing gear and the height of the ship, um, to name a few of in this shot. So, basically, we're just going to run through a couple of images here and just sort of uh, point out the things that we have tackled just recently. Um, the Carrick came with a shutter system, um, and also. Uh, that causes a few problems, so we've, we've, we've spent some time looking at that, and, and we'll show that in a little bit. Uh, we've also sort of taken a look at the back end, did a little bit of sort of styling and sort of uh, unification, because obviously we're a little further along uh, in the games, you know, we're a couple more years further on, so we've, uh, we've got style guides now which help. Um, and you can see here from the interior, it was a cool interior, and uh, we've kept a lot of stuff, but. Uh, it still didn't really sort of speak of that anvil flavor, which has been sort of developed with the Valkyrie. Uh, oh, terrible, terrible. Thank you. Help me out there. Um, so yeah, we've spent we've spent we've spent quite a bit of time just sort of uh, tweaking it and working with the with design and uh, with the art team. So that's the past, uh, or the very far past. Let's go slightly closer to the current day. Um, so how do we get from those concept images to what you saw earlier today? So the first task was to actually do a full interior white box block out, blocking in all the features that we'd promised with this using all our metrics. That meant the ship got quite big. So it got to 170 meters, um, which at the time, so sure, foundry making ships big. Yep, yep. Yeah. Um, That's what we do. So we'll just go through some of these. So this was the original layout of the bottom deck going up through the ship. You see uh, the, the front is quite packed with things, but there's a lot of, a lot of space in there. Uh, then there's back and engineering, and then the observation deck. <laughs> Not me personally. Took me ages to put that together. <laughs> so there's a, quite a few downsides with making the ship just bigger for the sake of making it bigger. Um, so we decided to try and get it back to actually the original size it was at concept, which is 123 meters. 
Yeah, if we, if we kept it that size, it wouldn't be able to fit on the large pads that we have, and it would only be able to spawn it where you could spawn like an 890 or a Reclaimer, so we didn't yeah. really want to do that. So yeah, all those 890 and uh, Reclaimer owners that know the pain of having to travel somewhere to spawn their ship, mm -hmm. uh, Carrick owners would have had the same pain if we had kept it like that. So we kept all the features. We just sort of shrunk them down a little bit and took out the corridor space between every single room. So as you can see, it's pretty similar. There's just no dead space between all the rooms now. Once we'd done a white box interior, though, there was still a lot of, a lot of the interior that we had yeah. no idea what it was going to look like. And this isn't, this hasn't really sort of followed on sort of normal process. You guys are aware, sort of, with our latest ships, uh, you know, we are now sort of working towards getting the ships a lot closer to what they should be, so that by the time they get into the game, there should be less changes, um, less disappointments. Um, and so basically, the ship team was already a good, a good like, probably like 50% of the way through this ship. Um, and as you guys know, I probably, you know, I normally sort of work with the concept team, and you know, we're working on other ships, and then a couple of requests start coming in. Oh, we need a little bit of help on this, and we need a little bit of help on that. Um, so what, we, what you're going to see is sort of more sort of behind the scenes sort of stuff, stuff that we generally don't show. It's pr it's pretty raw. It's pretty unpolished. You get to see some of my really quick, uh, rough stuff. There's that a lot of caveats <laughs> in this. <laughs> yeah, there is a lot of caveats. Um, but overall, you'll, you'll get a bit of an insight into the general process. So uh, here, I think we've got a caveat on here. This is, this is a really quick... We're sort of experimenting with different ways of looking at the shutter system. Something that's... <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Like I said, it is uh, on the slide there. It is uh, it is a temp animation that I sort of quickly bashed out just to sort of as a proof of concept. You can see there that it's the old uh, sort of this sort of original glass and the sort of uh, structure for the shutters. So this was more about uh, just the large shapes and how they might uh, fold back and kind of be optimal as well for yeah, the engine. Yeah, the original concept was like a roller garage door that went over it and. That's quite expensive in game because each one of those links has to be a bone. So you end up with a huge amount of bones to animate. And also, just the mechanics of getting them down the struts and folding around all the shapes on such a small angular piece is incredibly hard. Yeah. So there's definitely more work to do with this. Uh, obviously, that's just the top section. We, you know, we've got the bottom section to do. but. Um, these are all the sort of things that we'll give to the ship team and be like, well, we're kind of thinking like this. So we don't, we don't work out exactly everything, but, and it still gives the artists and the animators just a little bit of creative freedom to sort of work out some more of the extra stuff. And so you guys will be familiar with this front end. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of stuff in here that isn't what we'd class as Anvil anymore. S some of the shape language, especially at the front, with the curved. Um, and you know, I know you guys are, you know, you're big fans of struts. So, you know, I, I put this together. I thought you might like this. <laughs> you know, but joking aside, um, and as you will have seen in today's demo already, it's going to something a lot cleaner, basically. So, the visibility is much better. We actually, um, you can't see it in this image, but if you looked carefully at the demo earlier, uh, there is a hexagonal pane of front glass rather than curved edges, so then that. Yeah, so it's just harking back to the, it was even on the blister as well, just that, that shape. Mm -hmm. And so we've, um, you can see here, so we're working on the exterior, and um, the art team was struggling a little bit with some of the information. You know, they were sort of essentially trying to redesign it on the hoof. Um, and just sort of figure it out, and generally, you sort of you can lose quite a lot of time on that. So, um, basically, the internal team jumped on this, and it's just a reunifying uh, the ships. You know, you've got the familiar uh, anvil circle that's in everything, and just sort of making that flow into the back of the ship, uh, and generally just look uh, a little more integrated. And same with this this, this shot here. You can see. 
I literally just I've literally pulled this off my PC. It's got it's got all the sort of squiggles and drawings on it that we do on the, on the real time board. And it, this is really more just the front end, just sort of showing. It was more of a clear up, a cleaning up process on the original sort of character. There was a lot of what we call polygon cuts. So you know you select just a couple of polygons and you do an extrusion or a bevel, but it doesn't really make sense. You know you know you we generally push the ships a lot more towards reality now. If if this is a line or a cut or a pa panel change, it's there for a reason. It's you know it's if you look at certain space films that are popular. They do a lot of that to just add noisy detail on their ships that don't actually do anything or have any purpose, but it looks looks cool, but it's pretty useless. Yeah, so there's just a general sort of clear up of those those lines from the front, um, and just, again, just um, working with the anvil style, bringing it into the front. The same with the underside there. Uh, it, was, it was a little bit noisy. Um, it's sort of you know when you have it in engine, it can it can often read, especially that front ramp that was all um, separated, and we also spent some time on the pods because those were those yeah. are changed, right? Yeah, they yeah they are different from the concept, but we'll talk about those. And then also uh, those you be familiar with this, this is the back end, um, and generally most of the Anvil ships now have sort of exposed or partially exposed engines, and it was just a matter of. Um, working on that back end and just bringing everything into line. So you really, when you look at this ship now, you're like, oh, okay, it's Anvil. And when you see it next to its brothers and sisters, uh, you can really see that DNA that's in these ships. So we did work on the interiors as well. It wasn't just the exterior. Uh, and again, um, some less polished stuff than you're normally used to seeing um, in terms of corridors. There was a lot of... Uh, I guess different shapes going on in the yeah, corridors. There was, there was a lot of artists working on this at various points, and whilst they all had the same sort of shape language, everyone's definition of this hexagon was, was, was different. slightly different. So yeah. every deck you went on, there was a slightly different angle between them. So it was and just the, bringing and the them pods. Up. This is the what's this area? This is the uh, escape the pods. Escape pods, band bridge. And so all the there was quite a few sort of style things that were off off topic so again it's just bringing it into line just making it clearer simpler palette um, and really it's just about making it clear where you are this is the gravity gravity generator this is I always forget this where is this looking out to the engine room it looks down on the engine room. right okay so again quick pass just some line work um, just a little bit of decals just to give the team a little bit more of a direction just to keep things unified. Um, this is a cartography room. This um, this is something we sort of we, you know we threw together some ideas. Um, ultimately, Nate wanted to just keep with the central the big holographic star map. Yeah, star oh. map. Um, I mean, I like I, you know I did like those screens and everything. It makes it cool, but also it's also quite confusing because ultimately you want to see what's on the star map, don't you? Uh, it's not just the rule of cool. And then with the um, in, in the hangar, um, this was basically again uh, just unifying the colours, you know, keeping with the simple palette, and just you know basically putting on a little bit of red marking just to really make it clear. Okay, you're going out into a hard vacuum if you go out, out of this space. And again, just simple, uh, simple line work, some splashes of colour, and this is the um, repair room. Yep. Mm -hmm. What are we repairing in here? All sorts of stuff. All sorts of stuff, all right. <laughs> um, and also the medical room, you know, we've shown quite a bit of this on and off. On Yeah, we've shown it on various things. Um, if you remember, the the scanner machine in the middle is sort of exposed, but... It was, yeah, it was kind of open to everybody, wasn't yeah. it? So even if you were a patient, you were probably getting irradiated by whatever's coming out of the scanner. So we've kind of just put it behind glass. Um, and the two doors to the side are just to sort of either the operator's room or a storeroom, I believe it is. And again, just a little bit of a little bit of work on there. It's all very functional. It's nothing. It's nothing wow. So it's not something we'd normally release, but uh, it's just all to keep the keep the guys going, and keep the vision intact. Cool. So let's have a look where we are today. Um, with an immediate swerve to something really far in the past. 
So this was the original concept bridge with this uh, table, um, which is a hollow table like a lot of the other ships. Yep. So we started off here, then we changed it to a hollow sphere that spread across both decks, and we're like, that's not quite right. So we sort of have combined both into a hollow sphere and a hollow table. So it's circular, it projects a sphere, it will project all sorts of things to give the same impact. Um, other big changes on the bridge, the concept had a spiral staircase from the lower deck to the upper deck, um, but that's now an elevator. That's purely for metrics reasons. Um, the, the space needed for our characters to traverse up a spiral staircase would have pretty much taken up that entire gap between those two seats. Um, and again, if we wanted to keep it, ship needs to get bigger, wider, we go back round in circles again. Um, cargo pods, we talked about briefly. Um, so these have had some big changes. They're, they're still swappable, so the default version is going to come with these cargo pods in particular, but down the line we're going to let you swap them out for other types of cargo pods, other types of modules uh, that will go in to some point in the future. Yeah, they're, they're similarly designed to the, the ones on the Caterpillar, so it's got that gantry up top, and then we also made it so you, the sides will open up so that you can access space or the outside from them. Yeah, the original concepts had the, the openings to the outside beyond the faces that connect in between them, mm -hmm. which is great when they're on the ground, but completely useless in space. So whilst these are recessed inside the ship, the, they do double clamshell open. So the bottom can open, and then you can access these whilst in space or flying or do things like people do in the Caterpillar and shoot out of them. Yeah. Uh, next up, turrets. Um, so it had four turrets in the original spec. It's still got four turrets. They've got the same sort of guns on them. Uh, the side ball turrets are manned. Um, we did quite a lot of work on those. Uh, and the top turret is now remote. The bottom is manned. Again, that was a change due to the layout of the ship. Uh, if we'd kept the top turret manned, there would have been this just entrance point randomly in the middle of a corridor. Um, so making that remote frees up that space. And then the manned turret is accessible from the main elevator shaft that goes up and down the ship. And here we're sh showing off a little bit of a video where we've made the turrets on the side to be like the hammerhead turrets so that you get this greater degree of control and angle. We wanted to keep the aesthetic of the original concept turrets, but without this, they would have moved about 10 degrees in either direction, yeah. uh, which yeah, is, this is a nice suboptimal. Nice solution. Plus, you've got those size four guns on there, yeah, which they're, they're big guns now. Pretty decent. Uh, so this is the top turret that's now remote. Um, again, packing size four guns. Uh, moving through the interior habitation, we saw that earlier. So it's an ex-military ship, so it shares its habitation areas with the crew. Captain has his own captain's quarters, which I can confirm is now doesn't have a huge bathroom. <laughs> uh, it's the the bedroom's a bit bigger, the bathroom's a bit smaller. Yeah. The, the yeah. desk and room for shouting at subordinates is <laughs> equally sized. Um, we've got the hexagonal pool table that you saw earlier. Uh, and this is, you know, we've, you know, we've, we've, there's a nice contrast here. We're sort of moving to the, the softer, warmer lighting. You know, this is habitation, right? You're going from, you know, you're going from the sort of uh, almost scientific exploration part of the ships, the dark, dark greys. But then when you go into habitation, you want something a little lighter, something a little less oppressive. Um, but it, and you know, we kept, you've, you've got the familiar anvil shapes in there, and you've got, so you've got so it should be in quite a nice area just to sort of maneuver yeah. around. It's got a different like, aesthetic, like you say. Um, it's very white, creamy, light grey. Yeah, That's like the harsh, like dark grey of the rest of the ship. Yeah. It's the greys we were talking about. Yeah. It's the uh, drone room, uh, which we sort of briefly whisked past in the demo earlier today. Uh, so we have four drones for the ship, and there's two drone operators. You can see one, which is the sort of lit area at the back, and there's one behind where the camera is. Um, and yeah. I'm going to make full use of there being a laser pointer <laughs> on the desk. Uh, that if Steve wants to talk about where oh, they're going. Oh, there's the uh, track on the top so that they slide out, and then you can also repair them uh, in that section over there. Yeah, and then uh, they also slide down, and they can be deployed from there. So this is a sealed unit here yeah. that they come into and go 90 degrees and they go whoosh, launched out into space. They recovered the same way. 
It's sealed, so you don't vent this room, which is where you're sat operating them, which would be a very bad time for all involved. Engineering, which got an unexpected cheer when we were going through the demo earlier. It's just a very cool looking room. Um, yeah, it's always like a bit of a hero room, the engineering yeah. rooms. I mean, big, big you, steaming dark. You kind of want to. You want it to feel special. Yeah. Yeah. And then the gravity generators up there a little bit. So that's actually where that window of the gravity generator room looks out of. Yeah. Uh, biggest change is the landing gear um, from what we had at the start. Uh, we. This is what you've changed on here, so I don't know what's going to happen now when I press uh, it. So it, it's <laughs> you, you will have to click it, okay. and then it will animate it. But uh, yeah, we, you guys will know we went through, at least it should work. There we yeah. go. We went through several options. We, obviously, we've seen the long-legged version. Then we had the, do we have the sausage dog version? Looks like maybe that got taken yeah. out. With the little legs. We'll not remember the sausage dog version. Yeah. <laughs> Forget that from history. I don't know. I like Dachshund, so that was my favorite. <laughs> But I think this is I think this is the best this is a really nice solution. Yeah, it gives a really nice silhouette. Um we don't tend to do a lot of three points of contact landing gears um on big ships just because they're so big. But this is a really big uh, triangular sort of footprint, so mm -hmm. it works well for this. Yep. Uh then the question everybody wants to know, uh, which hopefully you've all heard by now, is February next year. Um The reason it's not coming out in 3A is we just needed more time on it, and we didn't want to release a half-finished ship, especially one as anticipated as this. Uh, I hope you'll all agree that that would be not the ideal outcome of just waiting so long for such an important ship and then finding a few of the rooms were not there. So. <laughs> so February next year. Yeah. Pass you over to Steve to talk oh, about something else. So there's, uh, I guess, a little little something that's coming with the Carrick, and that is the Anvil Pisces. <laughs> um, so uh, what is the Anvil P Pisces? Well, it's actually two ships. It's the regular Anvil Pisces. Along, and along with it comes the uh, C8X Expedition version of the Pisces. These are the initial stats for the Pisces, the ones that we uh, first uh, designed them around. It's got one pilot, it's got two jump seats, it's got some, uh, it's pretty small. It's, if, if something, if like an arrow will fit into your ship, then this will fit into that ship also. We, we uh, built this backwards from building the Carax hangar bay because mm -hmm. the Carrick's hangar bay is designed to fit this. I'm not going to say what fits in the Carrick hangar bay. I'll leave that to everyone else to find out, but we only really intend this to fit in the Carrick's hangar bay. And then it's got four SCU uh, if you want to carry some stuff. And one of the biggest features is the quantum drive. Yeah, it is, it is it. not a snub. It is a valid, small exploration ship. And then it's got some weapons and some missiles, some countermeasures, yeah. what have you. Yeah. And then the expedition version is it's, kind of a... Yeah, it's, so in law, the, the C8, the one you just saw, uh, is what Anvil released with the character, sort of the extra uh, military surplus version. Mm -hmm. When Anvil were actually making this back in the past, this is the version they wanted to include, but trying to sell military goods to civilians was apparently bad in the old days. <laughs> but now the Vandal are kicking around and the UE Militia Mobilization Initiative is out. Uh, the same initiative that gave us the Polaris, uh, they've been allowed to sell this. So it's pretty much the same ship. You get a sweet white paint job and a pair of extra size one guns mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, looks good. So we're going to talk a little bit about the concept process, give you guys uh, a look behind the curtain on this one. Um, when we started this one, we had a slightly different brief. Um, yeah, and true. and we'll, go, we'll go through that. I'll reveal it as we, as we move on. Um, and so this is a sort of typical thing that, that we'll put together. Um, this is something I put together a couple of years ago, but it's just to remind the artists the kind of things that we sort of look for 
uh, for the signature DNA of, of in this case, um, animal ships. So obviously you've got the circular motif that's always in the center, uh, large intakes, and then a sort of truncated front nose, um, and line work, generally sort of decals. Sounds a bit crazy, but they always go from left to right, or they, they don't return back on themselves, they always go from start to finish. Paul, it's, a, it's an Paul important thing for us. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else is like, whatever. Um, and so um, I think um, basically this is uh, sort of the initial pass. So um, this is basically sort of essentially kit bashing. And you will have, those, those of you may have seen Sarah do a little talk the other week um, with some ship stuff. Um, this is kind of a similar sort of process. And so you can see a lot of uh, other ships in here. And it's really just a sort of rough process just to start, just to get the mind working about, okay, what is it that we're looking for? Because everybody's idea of um, this kind of craft is different. Um, and so it's just a matter of, okay. And then, so we, we work together and I generally do the first, first round of culling. And then it's you know sort of my job to work with the concept artist, and we basically get some options that Chris can have a look at. And so these were the these were the four options that we presented to Chris. Um, and you know in the top top left there you can you know see where we came from. But there, there's some other cool ones in there. You know there's a the little stubby one on the bottom right that's that, that's kind of cute. Um, but ultimately uh, Chris. Chris was more in favor of the uh, top left. And so we from that we'll you know we'll take that. You can see in this one it's got the narrower cockpit and we were kind of working to a slightly different brief at this point. Um, it was going to be was it two operators? two SCU and two SCU yeah, and three full operator seats so seats with screens and MFDs. Yeah. And so it was a pretty, t it was a tight squeeze. I mean, that that space in the in the carrick wasn't particularly large, so we knew this needed fold. You know, the wings needed to fold, but also with the um, quantum drive, yep. there was a lot of components to to squeeze into this thing, and three people. Um, so poor old Sarah was, you know, backwards and forwards on this, and you know, trying to use other other animation templates, so we're not creating extra work for other teams. Um, and so we were continuing along quite nicely, and we get to the review, and then it's like, oh no, this it's not got enough. Yeah, there's not enough SCU in this thing. Need more cargo. <laughs> so uh, this is where I hand over back to design, and you can chat about um, how we got from what we came up with to yeah. what it so needed to be. We started with two SCU, and then somewhere along the lines, like we need four. So four's a good number. Um, yeah. Where are we going to fit it? So I, I lost a little extra hair, <laughs> I think, when, when we got that news. Um, and we'd, we'd done a few things. Um, the, the, this is how it was as 2SEU. So doubling it, someone's going to have quite a cramped ride in the back there. So we tried a few options, like two seats up the front. Two seats up the front, then you need the glass to be extra wide. We're like, well, that looks cool, so we'll, we'll keep that. Um, and we just couldn't fit those extra seats in. There was animation yeah. issues. Um, it was like trying to get into the pilot seat while the other seat was there, and then you know, both of you getting out at the same time. You just like go right in into each other. It just wasn't working. Yeah. So we changed those uh, operator seats to jump seats and stuck them right behind the pilot seats. Um, they sort of you get up into the space behind the pilot seat, uh, which then allowed us to move the the cargo bay forward. So. It can fit four SCU. It looks more than four SCU in there, but that is only four SCU. It's a very tiny ship inside. Um, and then there, yeah, it's a nice little labeled version of it. Uh, yeah, I think that's a good, it's a good option. So when's it coming out? Accidentally pressed the button too quick there, so I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this this will be in the 372 patch, uh, which is if it's not live already, will be live, and then it will be available for pledging tonight, tomorrow, and then it's just unlocked in your account. So that's the present. Let's look a bit towards the future. Mm -hmm. 
there's this weird, mysterious thing in your brochures that you're probably wondering what on earth it is. So let's talk about that. <laughs> Nervous applause. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's the Kraken Privateer. So this is not just a normal Kraken. So what is it then? It's a, a variant of the Kraken, and it's kind of like a mobile space station where you can have little shops and you can sell stuff to people. So in order to fit those shops in, you kind of take out a bunch of the cargo space. So let's have a look at how on earth we, we do that internally. So this is a cutaway of the base Kraken. So this is the regular yeah, Kraken that we unveiled last year. You've got your huge amount of cargo, extra fuel, you've got your Dragonfly Bay. And then this is a close-up of that. So the Kraken Privateer is a full variant. Um, it is not a modular swap um, because of the internal geometry changes. This next transition will make it look like it is a very simple swap, but trust me, there's a huge amount of interior changes that go on in here. So we swap out the main cargo bay for eight shops, and then the Dragonfly Bay for two more shops, and then there's extra habitation modules put in there. Um, so we're going to look at some of the actual pretty, pretty images for this. Yeah, so let's take a look at some of the visuals. Um, so this is the main marketplace, the public market. Um, and uh, this is this is a sort of uh, sort of idea of it sort of converted. So you can see there the modular shops. Uh, we've even stuck in a schmaltz beer that's just hanging above the above the um, hanger there, just for the thirsty drinkers. But it kind of gives you just a, a good flavour of what it might be like in there. And you can kind of see right at the back where you can see the sort of Kraken logo. Just above there, there's a there's a it's kind of like the captain of the ship. It's the crow's nest. So if, the, if you're the owner of the ship, you know you can be a, be looking out over your uh, uh, over the people over the marketplace. Yeah. So I think I think it'd be pretty cool. Yeah. So as I said before, uh, it's going to replace the main cargo hold, and you're going to get eight shops. It kind of uses the modularity uh, system that we have for the space stations, but they're going to be smaller than those. So it's not going to be the exact same shops. Uh, you're going to be able to hire NPC crew to run the shops, and uh, it's a kind of a public space, so you got to be careful with what you're stocking and selling there. No, no stocking widow in uh, good locations. However, speaking of which, so this section here is um, where the dragonfly bays were, but this has been re refitted. So this is the private market, and um, there's two, two, two shops in here, essentially. Um, I really wanted to pack it out with more shops, but, it's, you know, it was going to sort of like it, over... over Turn into a shopping mall. Yeah, basically. And we also need space for sort of AI and player navigation, but it gives you an idea of the slight... Maybe the slightly seedier vibe if you want to go that direction with your ship. So... This is the private market. It's behind closed doors, so it requires security access from the ship's captain to get in here. Places the Dragonfly Bays. There's only two shops. Um, and because it's invite only, this area does not have to abide by the local restrictions because the local security can't get in here. So if you've got some more illicit wares, then you can do them in here uh, and make a bit more profit that way. You could also do perfectly legal stuff up here. If, if you want. <laughs> it's just giving you the choice. And this is uh, one the final fitted out area. So in the original Kraken, this is uh, sort of large storage tanks, but they've been ripped out and uh, replaced with these extra hubs. So it should be a pretty cool sort of communal area. Um, and, you know, screens, maybe hopefully like maybe some like live stats of the marketplace. So you can be sitting there having a beer, chatting to your friends and just sort of see, see what's going on in the rest of the ship. Yep, uh, it's 10 extra hubs, there's 10 shops, you need, each NPC needs somewhere to live on board, um, and we didn't want them taken away from the existing hubs that are on board the ship, because uh, those are there for essentially the, the people that are flying their ships to the station and staying there. Uh, not, not a great deal more to say about that. Yeah. Uh, here's a little schematic of like, what it's going to look like, the setup. You've got your private shops up top with their own little storage below them, 
And then you've got the eight shops in the main cargo bay with the uh, secondary cargo bay being as the storage for those shops. And I am now going to try and explain shopping in 60 seconds whilst not being Tony Zerovec. So <laughs> the basic process for this is you have your Kraken privateer. The shops are modular, as you mentioned. They think converted cargo container crates uh, that have shops built into them. Uh, the Kraken will come with a default generic selection. If you want to change them down the line, feel free. Um, so you pick your shop archetype, like I'm going to pick my clothing shop archetype. I put it in shop one slot. I hire Paul, my shopkeeper, to run that shop, pay him one UEC a day to do that. <sighs> Cheapskate. I buy 500 Big Benny's hats, which takes up so many SEU of space, and I put it in shop one's cargo grid. So each shop has its own cargo grid. You can't pull them all together and have one shop selling a million things. They're all split up. When that shop's cargo grid is empty, you need to go replenish it. Uh, you set your profit margins on them, plus or minus, if you really want to do that. Uh, and then hopefully, make some profit. Mm -hmm. uh, and for those merchantman owners out there, uh, the merchantman is going to work in essentially the same way. They have shops, you buy stock, the stock is held in the cargo grid along with shared just cargo space, uh, and the shops use that. Feel free to talk to Tony about any of this afterwards. <laughs> Um, so yeah, there's a quick, very high-level overview of the two variants of the Kraken. Uh, Privateer has the 10 shops. It still has 768 SEU of cargo, which is a not insignificant amount of cargo, and it does lose the Dragonfly Bays. So we think of it as like the mobile lawful space station, or less lawful, if that's your thing. The regular Kraken has 3,792 SEU of cargo, which is a lot of cargo. So that's slightly more, slightly less than a whole sea. Um, and it has Dragonfly Bays, and we think of that one as sort of the, the mobile combat outpost. So if you want to be a Kraken owner, you've got sort of two paths to go down there. So that's the future. Let's talk about a bit more in the future. <laughs> so we're going to do something that we've never done before. Um, and this is stuff we do internally, but you guys have never really been involved in this process at this point. So we're going to pitch four ideas for future vehicles or ships that we're considering doing. Uh, we're going to give you a high-level breakdown of them. Uh, we've had the concept guys knock up some really quick sketches just to sell it, just like Paul showed earlier, where we, we have a 2D thumbnail sketch of them, and we go, yep, that one looks cool. That's terrible. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then we'll hopefully have time for a very short Q&A at the end on those ships. So if you've got some questions for one of those four ships we're about to show you, uh, we'll try and come up with some answers for them, because we have got no idea what you're going to think of these. Uh, and then we'll do the noiseometer to see. Yeah, uh, yeah. so we want, we want a little bit of crowd participation, sort of help with choosing uh, the favorite ones. So that'll be like Chris has done in the past. And we'll run through each one separately, and you guys make as much noise as you want for each one. And between the three of us, we'll try and figure out which one is the loudest. And if I don't hear the ship team who are hiding at the back of the hall, the loudest out of everyone, it goes on their performance reviews. <laughs> so, first up. First up is the ground mining vehicle. This is a, a, a ground vehicle that's made by an industrial manufacturer, something like MISC or Argo. It should hold about one to two players, and it should be probably smaller than an Ursa rover, so you can fit it on any of your ships, basically. Uh, it also has storage for your personal commodity inventory, so that you can take the things that you mine and you can put them into, into this. Uh, it should also aid in your detection of mineable objects, so you can scan around and find them. And then it also has a little laser on it, so that you can mine little personal FPS mining nodes. That one in the middle does look like it's holding a Wacom tablet pen. It, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, we can do a deal. For me, uh, I've picked a Jeanne cargo ship. Um, so something that is not from the, the current Jeanne manufacturers that we have at the moment. So I'm going to now butcher the pronunciation of it. That we, Al we asked Sherry several times. Sherry's, yeah, we talked to Sherry many times and have still messed it up. <laughs> uh, Multi-crew, uh, and it's one of these ships that sort of fills out the verse. We have the whole series. We have the freelancers, we have the caterpillars. Just like the real world, you just have tons of vehicles on the highway, freeway, interstate, whatever you call it in your country. Um, and that makes up the bulk of traffic. So we should have a, a variety of ships. Um, around 300 SU, that's sort of the sweet spot between something that is profitable uh, without being unwieldy to unload and manage, 
And yeah, it's competitors to the whole B and freelancer Max. So it's a bit more than freelancer Max. And my brain has failed me on the whole B's <laughs> cargo capacity. It's less than the Caterpillar. Yeah, we'll, we'll let you off. Yeah, we'll let you off. It's been a long day. Uh, so for me, uh, the Tavarin Light Fighter, I, I mean, I'm really digging um, what the team have been doing with the Prowler. Uh, you guys probably will have seen it on uh, some of the behind the scenes and how the ship's been developing. Um, and so I think there's a lot of potential for this ship. So this one would be an escort fighter to the Prowler. Uh, obviously, the sort of advanced shield tech, uh, two large S4 mounts, uh, nothing else, but other than it's just, it, I can see it looking super cool. So I'm, I'm pretty, I can, see, I can see good potential in that. And lastly, and lastly, the starter refinery ship. So this would be a one-man crew, but it would have a living quarters, and it would have a tractor beam that would grab those pods. So that we have these like standard pods that are on the prospector right now, and then so it could grab those off the prospector, and then it would hook up into it, and you'd be able to refine the materials that you mine from the prospector, and then store those on board. So. Hopefully there's someone that's going to come around with a microphone or something, because we didn't rehearse this bit. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we're just going to start pointing at people. Oh, the lights are up. Ooh. Um, people. So we'll have a few questions, uh, and only on these four ships. Hi. Uh, so um, with the Tavaran Light Fighter, uh, would it be um, uh, like a snub? Do you think, or more like anvil arrow kind of size? It, it definitely won't be a snub. Yeah. It'll be it'd be more of an arrow size. Yeah. Okay. So it would have all of the amenities that an arrow and, would and have. quantum drive and yes. Yeah. Cool. There's a guy over here on the on the left. Uh, the refinery um, can maybe dock to the prospector. Um, probably not dock to the prospector, but the, the pods the prospector has, we want to make the, be the universal sort of harvestable material, mm -hmm. uh, so they'll just be dumped in places and this ship can pick them up. Hi, I would like to ask, uh, wouldn't it be easier just to take a rover, remove the passenger compartment, put ore in it, mining laser on top, and you have your mining car? We could do something like that, but uh, the rover right now, uh, I don't think it's set up to have the, the power requirements that the mining laser would use. And then we'd, we couldn't, we'd have to build something that would take the personal commodity yeah, inventory. The, the rover is actually quite large for its size. So for the ground mining vehicle, we want to f have it fit in things like the Cutlass mm -hmm. and the Freelancer easily, just so it has that easy accessibility across all the ships. Uh, with the Tavarin Light Fighter, do you see it having the same sort of cockpit system as the Prowler, where it's, it's the, the one-way glass almost? Yeah, definitely. That's kind of the signature, the signature of those ships. And we'd also have the sort of the 3D sort of 3D printed tree structure that's forming, and sort of you see it on the inside and sort of coming out to the outside. So I think that that could be pretty cool. Hello. Hello. Um, Hello. Why would I want to get the refinery ship over getting a mining ship and then using a refi refinery facility? Because you'd have to pay the refining facility, whereas if you bought this ship on your own, you'd be able to do that process yourself and you'd kind of save yourself that middleman. You can also cut down on travel time. If you're mining somewhere and you have to go to the other side of the system to get to the refinery, uh, you could have a friend in this refinery ship or you could be in that role. And you could literally be parked next to a fleet of prospectors, and you're just shuttling it around, saving on time. Hey, um, isn't it better to focus on the alien ships so that we're, as we're getting approaching launch, we've got the faction encounters more fleshed out? Because there's only quite, a, there's only a few of each of the alien ships at the moment. That's a yeah. good question. I didn't hear the start of it. I just heard alien. <laughs> so, it was um, it was basically, wouldn't it be better to sort of focus more on the alien stuff rather than, um, you know, the yeah, traditional human stuff? We've got, we've got two aliens up here for 
sort of that reason that we've got a lot of we've got a lot of Aegis ships, got a lot of Anvil ships, got a lot of Mist ships. Uh, the alien ships are always interesting, and they sort of bring the world to life. Yeah, and if you know how long the Banner Defender took, though, it's like it it takes a little a little longer to kind of figure out that style and how they're different and what goes into them. So, like right now, we're working that out, but uh, we'd like to make it as fast as we make the Anvil and the Aegis ships at this point. But we're not quite at that point. Um, in regards to the uh, refinery ship, um, you've got the process for the mining vessel uh, going to the refinery ship, uh, like in space. Will there be a third option, a third part of the process, where we could then take the refinery into a transport, and so we can have the three layer of uh, mine, refine, and then transport to sell? Uh, would that be something that's been considered? Yeah. Uh, it's, if we reuse the same sort of pod system uh, for the mining ships to have and the refinery ship to use similar versions of that, then they can then be detached and put in a, uh, a cargo ship. So they, they're actually to SEU metric, so they would be able to stack inside. I think we just take one more question, because we've got a few more things that everyone who just left is going to miss. Yeah, it's a pity they left, because <laughs> <laughs> they, they're gonna, they kind of missed the, probably the best part. Yeah, yeah. I it have, to be them. I have actually a suggestion for the mining vehicle. Um, because it looks like very small, it, it, it looks like it's, um, it has to ha ha um, have to inherit a lot of machinery or tech inside. How about the two people are not inside of the vehicle, but drive uh, can hold onto it like on a garbage truck, something like that, mm -hmm. and can um, control it from our own outside, like yeah. more industrial yeah. feel. It's, it's definitely going to be tight space-wise to do like two. Two people sat inside it is already getting on to be wider than most ships can yeah. take. So yeah, yeah. It definitely. Uh, it's a good idea. I think there's there's a lot of opportunity for some creative, creative thinking with that. Definitely. Right. So, for those of you who are left now, have to shout twice as loud. Uh, here are the four options again. So how do we want to do this? Uh, we can. So I guess we're just going to start at the start. Yeah. So. Definitely, everybody, uh, you know, so th the way this works, like I said, we're going to start at A, and if you want A, make as much noise as you can, because we're just going to base this off the noise, and to figure out no which promises. one wins. No yeah. promises. Legal have asked me to make sure that we don't commit to anything here. <laughs> we'll take it into consideration. So, so for A, anybody who wants A, make your noise now. Not bad. That's, that's a pretty good noise. So for B, anybody who wants B, which is the Xi'an small cargo, make your noise. It's going to be hard. Yeah. <laughs> I still think A is maybe yeah, winning at the moment. Yeah. So for the Tavarian light fighter, C, let's have some noise. And for D, the uh, refinery. I, refinery. I, need to, I need my glasses on. Small refinery. So make a noise for D if you want D. Uh, that so. was not expected. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can safely say that was D. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so. One final thing before we go. Um, there's something else in the brochure that was teased, and we put it on a Spectrum post last night, which is the Argo Mole. So this is a multi-crew mining ship. Uh, the, the Mole stands for Multi-Operator Laser Extractor. It's a four-person crew, three mining cabs, one pilot. Uh, the mining cabs are all on the, you can see the front one here is extended out, the side ones also extend out. So you can mine three things independently, or three of you could mine the same thing if it's one of those particularly really hard mm -hmm. lumps of rock that needs multiple prospectors to do. This can do it in one go. Um, it has double the capacity of the prospector, uses the same uh, pods underneath. There's eight of them in a row with the extra spares on the underside of it. You can't particularly clearly see it because it's hidden behind that yeah, front VTOL thruster. Uh, and yeah, we'll be talking more about this in the, 
coming weeks. You might see a bit of it in the Jax trailer. So when are we going to see this ship? So it's coming in 3.8. I think we, we finally managed to keep a ship secret throughout all the live <laughs> patches. Yeah. Uh, it took a lot of work. It took a lot of detective work and reverse engineering and trying to figure out how you guys were finding out everything. But uh, possibly got on top of that. Uh, and that's it. So thanks for coming. Thanks for staying. Um, <laughs>